Obviously, very disappointed in uh, a, a lack of better effort, particularly in the fourth quarter. Um, I thought going into halftime that uh, with that 52 yard field goal, that that was kind of a momentum thing, knowing we're going to get the ball back. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's frustrating. You know, it's frustrating to have uh, 16 penalties. I mean, um, that, that's directly on us coaches, on what we teach and how we teach it and getting it, getting it across to the players about what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Um, you can't have that many penalties. Um, you know, the, the game turns on again, you know, for a while back and forth, turnovers. The team against the turnovers has a chance to do, you know, to do well, and they got two of them late. We had an opportunity, and, you know, just went ball went through Darnell Carter's hand and the other guy caught it, which is, um, is unbelievable. You know about uh, about that, but that's the way it goes. They got theirs, we didn't get ours. Um, and so, uh, as I told the players in the locker room, you know, listen, we got two games left, and and you can you know you can take it and go south. All those that want to do that, they can come by my office tomorrow, and um, I excuse them from practice and the rest of the season. Anybody that wants to go forward, move forward. Um, then uh, show up and uh, you know we'll get this thing going and get it in the direction where we want where we want it to go. Um, we're a work in progress. It's rough. You know it's not smooth around the edges, but it is what it is. And um, you know we'll get this team. You know this team and this program is moving in the right direction. I know it hurts on the scoreboard. Might it's not reflected that way, but I think that um, when adversity hits, a lot of times the true test of of someone's character is how you handle that. And you're not going to see this guy ducking his head or ducking questions or walking around, um, you know, feeling sorry for yourself, right? And I know what we got and know what we got to do. And I know Doug's anxious to ask questions, so go ahead, Doug. Three straight games the fourth quarter, you've had big problems stopping people. What, to what would you attribute that? Probably the biggest thing is when, uh, when the ball's thrown up in the air is having an ability to to make a play or not have a, a penalty on that. You know, when the ball's thrown in the air, the mindset, you know, has got to be belongs to me. Um, you know, every, uh, with the the exception of having a you know a, a penalty, which will keep a keep a drive going. And um, you know, so th those 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 things again, they, they have to be addressed about people just being in we're in position. I mean, just got to go up and you got to you got to make a play or contest a pass. I mean, a couple of the the interference calls, you know, they are they are what they are. But you got to go up and contest the ball. You don't you don't have a chance to do that if you're if you're just around and you're in the vicinity. Um, so you know, need big rushes. You know, you need somebody at the end of the game to get a big rush. Um, or, uh, you know, create, uh, as I said, create a turnover. So, you know, we, we, we have to keep manufacturing those type of things, those plays, those playmakers. But, um, you know, we do have to find a way to put a game away in the fourth quarter because our offense, as you saw today, even though, you know, towards the end, we started to move a little bit towards the end, just didn't get enough, didn't have enough, had a couple turnovers, and that, and that, uh, that ended it. Mike, uh, over the course of the game, you lost Rasai, Perry, and uh, Keith Payne. Saw the crutches for Rasa. What happened to the tailbacks? Uh, I think with Perry, um, you know, they, it was it was an issue, a collision issue, I believe. Don't know exactly what Rasa. I see that he's in a boot. Um, you know, key situation. You know, lower leg. You know, lower, lower leg injury. But I think. Uh, you know, I think he'll be back. You know, it's just, uh, it, it is, it's frustrating that the week before you lose your starting left tackle. And, you know, we're a team that can't afford to lose, you know, players, guys that have played. But on the other end, uh, Morgan Moses, uh, Sean Casperano, hey, look, you got to play. You got to step up and you got to play. You got to take the growing pains along with that. Because, um, and then everybody sees them on a grand scale when, uh, you know, when you, when you call for, uh, you know, false start or you're called for a holding because you're playing against a, you know, a, a down lineman that's their first or second team guy. So, but that's the way it is. That's the way you got to go. You mentioned the uh, you referenced penalties several times in the last couple of minutes, and you put the onus on you and the other coaches. Well, what do you need to adjust or alter in terms of your message to the players regarding that will help address the penalty issue? Uh, just that um, you know, when you're in, you're in certain positions to do things, blocks or carry out blocks. 
then it's it's it would rather you not carry the block out than try to carry a block out and block in the back or, or do something that you know that, that a guy that uh, that's on an edge and pull his jersey down or um, you know listen to uh, the snap count when you're going on two you know so that's got to create it and be created in practice and um, holding the the coaches accountable for the techniques that they that they teach to make sure that they're their techniques that are uh, um, you know that are that are sound and that uh, will, will allow us a chance to execute whatever we're trying to get done. And so since I'm in charge of the whole team, then, then I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's got to make sure that, that, uh, you know, that we reduce the amount of penalties by what's being taught and what, by what's being understood by the, by the guys that are playing out there. Mark's two interceptions. Uh, did you get a good look at those? Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're ugly, you know, and they went to the wrong guy. And it's one of those things where probably didn't see the underneath coverage. Guy made a great play. And then the second one, uh, I believe he just took the ball out of the receiver's hand, you know, just uh, had it in his hand and, and, and fought forward and took it out. Made a, I think it was Moten made a great play on it. So, um, you know, not, not to minimize that play, but, you know, ball's in our hands. we got to hang on to it because it's a ball security issue. So, um so they, 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 they got the turnovers when they needed, and we didn't get any when we needed them. First half, in addition to the turnovers, we counted as many as six drops by the receivers, a couple deep in the one territory. They've been pretty sharp. What, what was the difference today? Yeah, I noticed that also. Coach, Coach Laser had mentioned there were you know, a couple drops by, by the guys, and normally they're pretty sure-handed in that regards. And obviously when you're in a game playing against a team like, like, like Maryland, that uh, you know that those drops end up hurting you because they, either they're third down or they're and you got to do something else and here comes the blitz or they cause you now to, to punt the ball. So um, it is very uncharacteristic of, of that many drops by the receivers because usually they're pretty sure-handed. Coach, what are your thoughts on Maryland's execution? They went six for six in the red zone with touchdowns and you know they didn't turn the ball over at all today. Well, uh, that's you know. Yeah, you're right. Six for six in the red zone, and you know, and, and unbelievably, we were four for four in the red zone. So, I mean, but we had turnovers. So, when we got down there, we had a chance to score. Also, we just didn't get down there enough. They executed their offense. Um, like I said, you know, O'Brien runs an efficient style of uh, offense of what they're asking him to do, and he's got he's got those those playmakers, you know, having the ability to do that. I go back and I look at you know again the longest uh, all the passing yards you know that was thrown. Uh, receiving that the 50, the 62, and the 55 yarder in the first quarter were ones that, that hurt big time. You know, that kind of set up you know some scores for them. And then after that, you know, uh, we minimized that. But um, I got to give credit to them. They they, they played well. And you know, I know um, you know they're they're celebrating. Uh, you know, they they're bowl eligible and they'll be going somewhere for sure in December. Well, we'll be hard at work working to make sure that my team gets better and we recruit better players and we, and we keep doing what we need to get, get done to, uh, to, to make people proud and, and, and be representative of the type of program that this university deserves. Mike, uh, I know you're worried about Torrey Smith as a return specialist. He didn't have a huge game there, but as a receiver, he obviously did. How, how difficult a matchup is he on the edge? As I said, he's one of the best that I've seen, particularly in the, in the, the return game because he's so dynamic. And, um, you know, a couple of those times in the long bombs right there that, uh, you know, you could argue about the jockeying back and forth and, you know, who is responsible for what. But, um, you know, when you have a weapon like that, then, uh, you know, they use it on, on offense. We tried to minimize what he, did to, uh, what he could do to us on, uh, on the special teams part of it. So, uh, you know, he got behind us and, you know, had a, had a great day on a couple of those catch and runs. After, after Ross yeah. went out, it seemed like Merrill made a concerted effort to, to go at Devin Wallace. Uh, what were your thoughts on this play tonight? Uh, not without watching the film. I don't know um, if that was that was the case. Uh, maybe because that's where that's where um, he, uh, 82 was lined up most of the times by, by, by formation. But um, no, either, either way, I mean, um, the next guy up's got to be able to step in and play, whether it's him or Mike, Mike Parker. You know, Chase had his own issues. But, um, you know, these guys played against USC. You know, they played, they played against other teams and, and held their own. So um, the life of a corner out there when you're one-on-one, -on -one, everybody can see your flaws. And, uh, you know, so they saw them today or tonight. Hey, uh, 
spectators are always get irritated when they see a defensive back give up a ball when the, the DB is going stride for stride for with the receiver and doesn't turn around. It looked like one of those plays happened right in front of your bench where I believe Wallace was right on the guy and just never turned around. What what do you feel about that? Your philosophy. What is your philosophy on that? Well, I mean, yeah, you see a lot of man coverage, a lot of you know, and, and it's taught um, you know different ways, but most of the time, you know. The ways I've been around other coaches, other 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 teams, and you know when you're teaching man coverage and the guys running, is that you got to run step for step, hip for hip with them. Then the ability to when the guy puts his hands up for the ball is your ability to play through his hands. You definitely don't want to turn back and look at the quarterback because then that gains separation from you and the receiver, and he can track the ball better. So it's one of those things you stay with him hip for hip. And when his hands go up, then your hands go up through the ball and separate his hands. So if anything, then that's a technique that, can, that needs to be uh, improved upon as opposed to um, playing a zone coverage where you're over top of them and you're backing up and then you're breaking downhill on them. You know, when you're, when you're playing man, and that's how man, man coverage is, is, is played in, in a lot of places that I've been. So, um, but being able to play it well and execute it and separate the guy's hands from the ball, that's, that's the other thing. We've got uh, Darnell Carter, Matt Conrath, Chris Bird, Chris Hinkabine, and Jacob Hodges in the back already. Right, did you uh, did you feel like you'd have to throw it as much as you did today in order to have a chance to win? Um, Jerry, I, I, whatever I think, whatever it took to the running game to set up the passing game and vice versa, whatever it took, I think that was the plan. You know, we knew they were going to do a lot of uh, four man, five man configuration blitzes and things like that, and. And um, we thought we could uh, make some throws in the passing game to uh, to get yardage. And we also thought that we could run the ball in certain situations to uh, to gain some yardage. So, you know, as as the game went on, we just wanted to see what you know what what their mindset was going to be and, and how we could affect them. You don't anybody taking you up on your offer, just walking away, knowing this team, the character they're showing. Uh, you know what? You, you hope not. You know, I, I don't think so. This team has uh, been very resilient. Um, it, it, it's a shame in the last couple of days, you know, two players in particular lost very close ones and then one lost one last night. And, you know, this is a tough business that you got to be a coach, but you also have to be a father figure, a role model, and a mentor. And regardless of there's football game to be played, but these are also young men that that are looking for guidance. And you try to rally the team around causes and individuals, but nothing eases the pain when you lose someone that's close to you. Nothing e e eases that. So, um, got to play a game, got to coach, got to teach, learn life lessons. If you lose a game, you dust yourself off, and then you try to find out how you can do something better the next time. This is the first time I've heard you question the effort uh, you know, before the board you just didn't feel the effort was what it did be. Um, not, not necessarily the effort, Doug. I, I think just, you know, we got out tempoed a couple times. Um, they came up with some formations that, that uh, um, should have had calls to get us in the proper front and lined up or slide or, or you know, things like that. It just wasn't enough of a sense of urgency, I guess I would say, that to, to get us back into a place we can minimize whatever they were doing. You know, we practice it, you know, then we're out there in the game and, you, and you're like, we've got to get this, we've got to get lined up, we've got to slide the guys down. You know, that's, 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 that's a tough thing, tough pill to swallow. But we've um, got to coach them better to do that because it won't be the next, it'll be the last time that we see something like that. We'll have to be ready for you know, down there in the goal line. They shift it out. I mean, you know, you've got to be prepared for, you know, some things that they may do unconventional like that. But that's why you've got to coach and teach. And, uh, and, and have the players understand that this is what I have to do, this occurs. So I, I was more disappointed in, in that than, than saying that we didn't give great effort.